Welcome, and thank you for joining our group of compassionate volunteers here at Wayside Waves. Our dog socializers play an important role in improving the health and well-being of our dogs by providing walks and human companionship. The purpose of the Dog 101 class is to prepare you for this role. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand dog socializing policies and procedures, be familiar with the basic signage used in our shelter to communicate about the dog's medical and behavioral stages, and understand basic dog body language and handling techniques. You will then enroll in a hands-on training session to practice safe entry and exit from a kennel and demonstrate ability to safely leash, harness, and handle a dog. We are going to begin by talking about disease prevention. Disease is most commonly spread by people. Their clothes and objects like cell phones and eyeglasses that we often touch but hardly clean. We can control the spread of illness by sanitizing or washing our hands between walks, not moving toys or bedding from one kennel to another, and not letting dogs meet other dogs on walks. This includes not letting them sniff the doors of other dogs' kennels, and not touching dogs through the kennel bars with our fingers and then touching another dog. You may also see this sign on the right here that says HW positive. This stands for heartworm positive. Activity needs to be kept to an absolute minimum for heartworm positive dogs. They can only go on short, calm walks until they have fully recovered from their heartworm treatment. Excessive activity can cause further heart and lung damage as well as sudden death as the worms are dying off in and around the heart and lungs during this time period. Heartworm infection is only transmitted through biting mosquitoes, so these dogs are not transmitting heartworms to each other. Please make sure that you're checking the back of the kennel for all signage before you walk a dog. You can also identify these dogs by the red paper collar they will be wearing. They're typically going to have restricted activity for the entire treatment time plus four weeks after they finish their treatment for a total of 120 days, whether they're here at the shelter or in their new home. If you see any symptoms of medical concerns, please report these symptoms to a staff member along with the dog's name and location. Sneezing, diarrhea, coughing, vomiting, blood in the stool, any type of discharge from the nose, eyes, or ears, any signs of lethargy or weakness, hair loss, flaking, scabbing, or rash, excessive scratching or pulling out hair, head shaking or pawing at the ear or an unusual growth or lump. Medical emergencies are those things that you would tell the vet clinic about immediately. Do not touch or move the dog if you see any of these symptoms. Dogs that are feeling extreme pain or illness are unpredictable in their behavior, so we want you to stay safe, but we also don't want to spread anything if the dog has a contagious disease. Signs of medical emergencies are bloody milky stools, breathing difficulties, any type of bleeding or broken bones, a possible seizure, or if the dog is non-responsive. If a medical concern has already been reported, a monitoring sheet will be placed on that dog's kennel to help us get a more complete picture of the animal's health. Please record any health observations on the monitoring sheet if you see one. If you're unsure how to record your observations, please find a staff member to assist you or just record your findings on the back of the sheet. This information is important, so we really appreciate the extra time in helping our population stay as healthy as possible. Now that you understand how to take precautions and what signs to look for, it's time to choose a dog to walk. Any of the dogs in the dog adoption side should be available to walk for volunteers that have had the required training. Available dogs will have an orange kennel card on the front of the kennel. It is important that you're reading all signs posted on both the front and the back of the kennels before you walk a dog. We assign our dogs tiers to help you choose a dog that fits your skill level. Tier 1 dogs are typically easier to walk, usually only with a slip lead. Tier 2 dogs tend to be moderate pullers and they may have a harness assigned to them. The majority of our dogs are Tier 2s, so a successful dog socializer should have or be able to work towards a comfort level with Tier 2s. Tier 3 dogs are those that are more difficult to walk and we do require volunteers to take additional training in order to work with our Tier 3s. A new walking list is printed out daily and our walking lists are sorted by location. The dog's names are listed along with their tier, location, animal ID, and housebroken status. Please pay close attention to the tier as you select a dog to walk. For the column titled housebroken, if that column says yes, the goal is to get that dog out three times per day. We track the times that our dogs have been out under the time walked columns. Please record the time that you took the dog out of the kennel. 
you will find useful information about each dog on the kennel card. For your convenience, paperwork is also on the back side of the kennel, which is where you as a volunteer will be getting the dog from. You should read all signs before taking the dog out. Check for directives and walking instructions and read through them so you have all the information you need for a safe and successful walk together. Dogs mainly communicate non-verbally through the use of body language. This body language includes eye and ear position, body position, how they hold their tail and move it, body movement, and facial expressions. Knowledge of body language and the ability to read it will help you decipher what a dog is trying to communicate. Before entering the kennel, take a moment to observe the dog's body language and behavior. In general, a relaxed dog will have loose body language and a dog that is uncomfortable or tense may have stiff or rigid body language. Dogs should always be given the opportunity to move away if they feel frightened. Here's a short video on canine body language and behavior. In addition to reading canine body language, it is also important to be aware of our own body language and communication. Here is a video on how to interact with unfamiliar dogs here at the shelter. This video is going to go over how to correctly approach a dog based on their body language. This dog may be confident 
or it may be more shy and fearful. So once we decide if the dog is more confident or more shy, we will adjust our body language to fit that. So if I um, approach the kennel and the dog is very confident, very eager to, to, for me to enter and for, to go for its walk, I would enter the kennel and be standing up straight, facing the dog, or possibly even with my back turned and my arms uh, together if it's jumping on me. If the dog is more shy and fearful, I would enter the kennel and I would get down low and sideways so I look small. I will avert my eyes and I would raise the tone of my voice to a high pitched tone and wait, possibly hold out some treats, wait for the dog to approach me. What I don't wanna do with a dog who's a little bit more fearful or a dog who's very jumpy um, is come in and get over them, rough them up, um, pet them over their heads. All of those things are going to either over arouse them or scare them. So first I'll demonstrate how I would approach a dog that is a little bit more shy. They're maybe sitting on the other side, their ears might be back, um, their head might be low, they're not making eye contact with me. I'm not going to barge right in that kennel. I'm probably going to scare him if I do that. I'm going to open the kennel door and I'm going to get down. This is Maddox here. He's a little bit fearful. So I'm going to get in low. I'm not going to look at him. I'm going to pet him on his chest. His ears went back a little bit. And I'm going to just stop and let him see if he wants to continue interacting with me. I'm not going to push anything. If he wants to walk away, I'll let him walk away. He came back for a little bit more interaction. Hi. So I'm giving him a couple treats. I'm definitely not gonna go up over his head. I'm not gonna stand up real tall and big because that will scare him. So if he didn't wanna approach me, I would use a real high-pitched voice. Come here, boys, come on, let's go. And I'd get down low and entice him to come over to me. So now I'm gonna kinda of show you how I would again get in a kennel or approach a dog that is more confident. They're up at the kennel door waiting to greet you. They're super excited to go on their walk or for you to get in and interact with them. I'm gonna come in the kennel. I'm gonna be standing up. I'm gonna stay standing upright. I'm not gonna get down like this because they're gonna greet me right in my face. If they jump up on me, I'm gonna turn my back, keep my arms up. Um, I'm gonna usually get a treat and hold it down low. So I'll encourage their feet to be on the floor. When all four of their feet are on the floor, I'm gonna turn back around and I'm gonna ask them to sit. I'm gonna keep my voice um, low and clear. I'm not gonna use a high pitched voice because it's gonna get them super excited. They're already excited. I'm gonna show you now what's gonna happen um, if I get down low. Sam, okay, so if I get down low with Sam and I get him super excited, he is gonna jump up on me and he's gonna start getting mouthy. Obviously, I could get hurt in that process. He could scratch my face or my arms. Um, and also, it's not teaching him good behavior. So I'm gonna always just ask him for a sit. Look how good he's being. And I'm gonna reward him with that. Then I can go ahead and slip lead him and take him for a walk. So now we're gonna see a little demonstration on how I would approach a dog um, that somebody else has on leash. You're gonna encounter that lots of times at the shelter. I wanna be sure that I'm looking at the dog's body language. So Sadie has her ears forward. She's wanting to sniff me and approach me. I'm just gonna stand for a minute, let her sniff me. She's licking me a little bit. She wants to interact. So then I'm gonna go ahead and pet her, let her lean into me. She's very, um, very social. So all of those body signs are good. So I'm gonna show you kind of the incorrect way to approach a dog that might possibly be fearful. Um, so here we go. So you can see when I did that, he froze, he got down low, his ears were back, he kind of tensed up. I'm gonna go back and show you the correct way to approach Maddox here. So, hi Lauren, can I approach your dog? Sure, he's a little nervous. Okay. Hey 
Maddox. Hi. Hi, buddy. Hello. That's much better. To encourage dogs to be calm when people approach, wait until the dog has all four paws on the floor before entering the kennel. Do not leash the dog if he or she is jumping up on you, as this is rewarding poor behavior. If the dog is jumping up, keep your arms up and close to your body and turn your body away and ignore the dog. This video shows how to enter and exit a kennel when walking dogs at Wayside Waves. You have already chosen the appropriate dog from the walking list, signed them out, and wrote their name on the paper that you will keep with you. This paper comes in handy if you forget where the dog belongs. Confirm that this is the dog that you signed out. And this is the correct tier. Check for any special walking equipment in the basket. Since no walking equipment, ready your slip lead. Your trainer may show you alternative ways to hold the leash when entering the kennel. Make the loop big enough and ready to slip over the dog's head. Undo the hook and chain. Wait for all four paws on the floor. Lift up the main latch, enter the kennel sideways, and close the door. The dog may pop up. If the dog gets jumpy, keep your arms in close and turn away. Once the dog settles, offer a treat through the loop and slip the lead over the head. Tighten the leather tab. Again, dog settles, slip the lead overhead while offering a treat. Tighten the leather tab. Before leaving the kennel, shorten your leash for better dog control. Lift up the main latch and exit the kennel. Notice the dog did not push through the open door. Do not open the door if the dog has paws on or is pushing on the door. Keep a short lead while inside the shelter. Check for dogs when you come to the end of the row. When coming back to the kennel, keep a short lead. Confirm this is the dog's kennel. Enter the kennel and shut the door. Loosen the leather tab and remove the lead. Toss a few treats to the other side of the kennel. Watch the dog while backing out so there's no surprises. Relatch the hook and chain. Please hold the leash as shown on the screen. Make sure you're keeping your elbows tucked into your sides. This stance gives you the most control and stability. Your hold on the leash should be the same for harnesses. When you're on a walk, you're going to walk around the grounds and spend approximately 20 minutes with each dog. Please do not jerk your dog in the direction you want to go. We don't want them jerking you around either. Dogs who are assigned harnesses or walking aids must be walked with that equipment. Here's a quick video on using the Easy Walk Harness. So if you get to the back of the kennel and there is a harness in the basket, um, you do need to walk that dog with the harness. It's called an Easy Walk Harness. It's the harness you'll find here at the shelter. So I'm going to use James here to demonstrate how to put this on. You're gonna always um, use the opposite colored strap to unbuckle and buckle. You shouldn't need to adjust anything else. And then you're going to use a treat if you need to. 
and then it's gonna come on like a necklace. James doesn't really want me to put that over his head, but we're gonna use a treat. And then you're gonna come from underneath. This is the, clip, the strap that's unbuckled. It's gonna come under his belly, and then you're gonna clip it. Put your hand in there so you don't clip their skin. That can be sensitive there. And then you're gonna take um, the harness and clip it to the collar. We always use a double point of connection, that way the dog can't slip out of the harness. When you have a dog out of a kennel, the dog is your responsibility. Be aware of the environment and pay attention to the dog's body language and behavior at all times. When inside the building, keep the dog from jumping up on people and rushing up to people or other dogs by keeping two hands on the leash and your elbows tucked in. Stay off your cell phone and pay constant attention to your dog. Remember that not all dogs are friends, so dogs should never meet here at Wayside. The only exception is through an approved activity that's been cleared by staff, such as a playgroup or a dog introduction, which requires additional training. If you do see another dog, try to create some distance. You can do that by maintaining a loose leash on your dog and distracting them away with a clicking sound with your mouth or a treat or a toy or changing directions. Adhere to the no potty zones. These are mainly the landscaped areas in the front and sides of the building. Make sure you are always picking up waste and make sure you have several poop bags available to pick up waste for your dog and any other waste that you might see that someone else may have forgotten. There are several trash cans around campus. Please do not use the trash cans that are near the front door. We do not want the public's first impression to be a smelly one. Make sure you're sharing space with other volunteers that are walking dogs and always keep your dog on a leash. Reward behaviors such as sitting, standing calmly, and walking nicely on a loose leash. Do not reward your dog for things like jumping and pulling. Shelter dogs learn within two weeks of being here that humans equals activity. Dog walkers can help them remember the home skill of relaxing with people by offering cool down time after the walk. There are several areas that you can do cool down time with your dog. Know your dog and choose an appropriate spot for that dog. If your dog is reactive, it's not a good idea to sit near the front door or near any high traffic areas and especially the adoption center. The volunteer center or the cuddle room are great options, as is the dog's own kennel. Relaxing helps to decrease the level of stress and arousal and gets the dog accustomed to downtime, which is a key element for success in a home. So options are reading to the dog or just sitting and doing light petting when the dog is calm. Limit your eye contact and don't do any type of playing or roughhousing during calm down time and make sure you're only petting when the dog is showing calm behaviors. Tips for high energy dogs. Higher energy dogs generally need long, brisk walks. They usually do better if you make them work by asking them to do basic obedience cues while on the walk. They may need you to redirect them to a sit when they are pulling, jumping, or trying to chew on the leash. It is important to practice being calm because they can excite easily and become overstimulated. Calm time would be sitting quietly and only rewarding dog during moments of relaxation. You are helping them to build a system where it is rewarding to be calm. Remember that this is a normal life skill that these dogs will need. It is also important not to play tug or roughhouse because games like these can easily get out of control. The dog could inadvertently bite you because they're just trying to regrip on the toy. Remember, additional training is available to you to help you walk dogs that are more challenging and to learn how to teach basic obedience. Sign up for the next dog behavior and basic training class. Occasionally, a dog will get loose here, so we have a loose dog protocol. If you are inside the building and you cannot within the first five seconds call the dog back to you by name or by treat, immediately yell, loose dog, at the top of your lungs. It's going to be very loud if the dog gets loose because all of the other dogs are going to start barking. And the reason we yell loose dog very loudly is so that any staff and volunteers in the area can secure the dogs that they have and help you get the dog that got loose. If you are outdoors when this happens and you cannot call the dog back to you within five seconds, go to reception quickly and let them know that there is a loose dog and the last known location of that dog. It's very hard to leave when you see a dog running away because you don't want the dog to get out of your sight, but it's almost impossible for one person to catch a dog that has taken off running. The staff member at reception will make an overhead page for all available staff and volunteers to help. 
If you are trying to catch a loose dog, here are some tips. Use high value treats. Hot dogs are usually a favorite here at the shelter. Dogs like to chase, so run away from the dog and use a high pitched voice to try to engage them in play with you. Lure them by moving quickly into a secured area such as a play yard on the side of the building. There are many volunteer positions available to you after you receive training. For example, helping adopters meet dogs is a support position for the adoptions department. If you're interested in helping the public find their best dog match, speak with a volunteer department to receive training. Your next class should be dog behavior and basic training. You can watch for all of our upcoming classes in the weekly volunteer email. Make sure you're checking for prerequisites for all of the additional classes and volunteer positions. And last but not least, don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. Thank you for joining this presentation. Your next step will be to complete a short quiz and enroll on a hands-on training session. A video with instructions will appear once you pass the quiz. Once again, we thank you for joining a wonderful group of volunteers and we look forward to seeing you soon.